Okay, welcome to the stream, everyone. This is kind of a little bit last minute. Uh, it's going to be Conqueror999, also known as Dictator, against uh, Prince of Kabul. This is a match in the lower bracket, going to be a best of five. <clears throat> and uh, I will be solo casting today. And uh, it looks like the first game here will be on Pampa Sierras. And it's going to be Aztec versus India. Which is a matchup I feel like we've seen so much in this tournament so far. Uh, let me just check the resources really quick. Um, mm, mm. Hunts looking... Ah, they look fine, actually, I think. No, maybe not. Might need to give this one a restart real quick. Throw it out to the players. Alright, do a quick restart here. And this one looks like a much better spawn this time, I think. So we'll be going with this one. <clears throat> what I was saying before is that we've been seeing this matchup a lot this tournament. Um, with mixed results a little bit. A couple of losses for India, a couple of wins for India, etc, etc. Uh, personally, I really like this matchup for India, but I recall playing this matchup on stream recently. And uh, Prince was saying that uh, whatever I was doing with India should be really easy to beat with Aztec, so he might be doing something a little bit different from most other Aztec players in this matchup. Uh, we'll have to wait a little bit and see. Looks like he's also going to be grabbing the first two treasures in his base, going to give him a total of 100 extra food towards his age up, but it will allow Conqueror to get uh, a lot of extra llamas on the side here if he pushes all the way up, but he might not push all the way up if he expects that um, Prince's Explorer may be up here, although if he sees the 40 food treasure, maybe he'll realize that his Explorer is not likely to be up on this side of the map, but uh, no, looks like he is maybe just going to go grab the uh, five llamas, so a very slight advantage over to him, but not going to push that too much. Oh, no, never mind, changing his mind. Gonna spot an extra llama, and seeing this llama might indicate to him that Prince really isn't on this side. He might think to go for more, or he might just decide to go back for this treasure and play it safe. Um, meanwhile, though, Prince gonna get another food treasure, so 200 extra food towards this age up is going to really allow him to age up at least one vill earlier, maybe even two vills earlier. Uh, that's going to be really nice for him. I didn't see exactly what the crate start was, but just looking at Everything in queue, it looks like it was a wood start, as Prince does have a extra 100 wood in the bank. So that's going to help out India, but the extra 200 food definitely going to be nice for Aztec now. <clears throat> Although he doesn't have a whole lot of food left, so we'll see if it actually allows him to age up any faster. Stray cow going to be picked up for India, not the worst treasure in the world for them, as it will give them a bit more experience, not a lot, but a little bit. Five llamas back at home. Uh, didn't he have six? He has a six llama somewhere. Oh, it's right here. Okay. But uh, Native Scout going to be grabbed for Prince as well. Going to help him harass these monks a little bit. Uh, as well as uncover a little bit of Conqueror's plan as the game moves forward. On the flip side, though, let's see how many bills he has in queue. He's one villain in queue. It looks like Prince could go for an earlier age up. He's not going to be without idle time. He's probably going to idle for a few seconds when this fill pops. But it'll be really, really close. We'll see. Okay, it pops out now. So he's going to idle for about 40 food, which is totally fine. That's like two or three seconds, and he's going to age up one villager earlier. So that's going to be really nice for him in this matchup. As uh, speed is everything in this matchup, you want to get in to, as or 
India's base. If you're being aggressive anyway, you'll be into India's base before they uh, can get the Ottoman consulate down. But actually, this is a really, really defensive agri-fort, building it behind the town center, so really making sure that there's no threat of Puma or anything. And this is actually a pretty decent position for it, to be honest. I mean, you can herd this hunt in towards it. It's going to cover this gold mine, so even though this gold mine's on the front, it's not a big deal. It covers all of these trees in the back as well. Um, and really allows him to make use of town center fire at any point um, if Aztec pushes in here. So I actually uh, was a little bit iffy on the Agrifort position, but I actually think I kind of like it uh, for now. And there's going to be two forward villagers or Prince. And the native scout also going to pick up uh, both llamas, I imagine. Yeah, going to walk over toward that llama that he neglected to pick up earlier in the game. So... Yeah, I'm kind of interested to see how this plays out with the Agrifort like this, because Aztec might also want to poke in a little bit more with the Mace Halton without the Agrifort on the front, force a lot of villagers to garrison and stuff like that. Uh, I also like that he's using this gold mine on the front for now, as he will use this gold first while it's not under threat, and then when it does get threatened, he'll move back to this gold mine and be totally safe over there. But uh, no vills on the Wonder is uh, going to mean... Well, he's aging up at a reasonable time. He'll be up probably around 4.50-ish, so be four or five minutes. But uh, Aztec could have some units out before then. Let's take a look at the shipments real quick. It was 700 wood for Aztec. Um, so pretty standard stuff, getting the market down. Going to be getting hunting dogs soon, I imagine. Got some vills on gold for that. He's gathering more than 50. He's gathering quite a bit, actually. So he's going to be training Puma Spearmen for sure. Or else going up to the third age, but I don't imagine that he's actually going to want to go up to the third age. There we go, Puma Spearman in queue. So again, pretty standard stuff so far, although Conqueror really just building all of these buildings behind the town center here. Really locking down everything, keeping them away from the siege of those Puma Spearmen. So really liking this from him so far, and he's got Gurkha in queue now. Um, we'll see what he sends as his first shipment. Consulate going to go down with... Uh, four villagers on it, so I imagine it's 300 export on the way right now to get that Ottoman consulate up as soon as possible and have the possibility of those uh, Minutemen as early as possible to defend any early pressure, as we can see, is coming. Um, it will make it a little bit more difficult for him maybe to get out uh, good batches of Gurkha, but he gets out three on the first batch, which isn't, which isn't terrible. And no, it's going to be four in logging, actually. Okay. So, going a little bit greedier here. It might actually work out for him with the buildings placed so defensively like this. Um, if Prince wants to come into here and siege anything, he wants to come into this location to siege anything, the Minutemen can pop out from the town center directly onto the units, which is going to make it really difficult for Prince to pressure. I'm not sure that Prince has even really scouted where the Agrifort is, although the native scout's right here, so maybe he has an inkling. Um... He could maybe come in and siege the market from the side here, but that wouldn't be too much of a deal, big deal for Conqueror, I think, especially with the extra range on this Gurkha, going to allow him to uh, defend against units pretty easily, probably. And Diplomatic Intrigue is in now. Does he have Ottoman Consul on the way? He does. So, yeah, I'm really liking his position so far, but uh, looks like... This big mass of Puma gonna come in here. He's got... Oh, that's an insane number of Puma. Needs to get those Minimen out as soon as possible. There's gonna be a lot of damage taken onto this. Uh, he does have the Founder uh, researched as well, which is going to give him the extra uh, aura on that. But that's so many Puma Spearmen that this is actually just gonna go down. And 960 experience going over two prints there. That Minimen call being uh, really slow there. And... Uh, actually goes uh, really well for Aztec, all things considered. Two and a half shipments now saved up for him. And uh, he's going to just retreat, send those shipments, try and make use of that uh, little advantage he got there. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, that kind of sucks for India. He's left without a military building after that. And, uh, hmm. Okay, so what's the plan now for India? He's got to rebuild that barracks. He's still, okay, 600 wood arriving now. He's going to use that to get those 
uh, military like, buildings back up, probably both a racks and a stable if possible. Um, but Aztec, on the other hand, wood upgrade coming in now. Going to be pressing that advantage a little bit by getting that economy in. Nine Mace Halton is coming. Okay, he could just be going right back in. Uh, maybe with a five Coyote shipment next could be a really scary push uh, for India to have to deal with. Uh, so the barracks is just now being rebuilt. There's five Coyotes maybe on the way. And no stable or anything just yet. Uh, Conqueror doesn't have a shipment either to send maybe five Sepoys or four Soars. So this next timing push could be really, really hard for him to hold. There's the stable going up in the back. And he's got Gurkhas in queue. But there's a batch of Coyotes. Is it going to be the five Coyotes coming next? No, going to be 600 wood. Okay, so going to be not quite going back in uh, right away. Just going to uh, use that wood to get um, some extra houses, get some extra units out. And he does have another shipment available to him, so going to be really, really far ahead in the shipment curve here. Zambrax in queue for Conqueror behind this. But, uh, not going for the Ottoman villagers, going for the Hussars. Gonna get some uh, raiding done, draw some attention away from his base towards uh, Prince's base. Really paying off for him so far, killing three Vils. Uh, so even though he's de he's lost the four Vils himself, he gets three Hussars and kills three of his opponent's Vils by some idle time, by some time for him to uh, be a little bit safer at home. So this is a really nice uh, call from Conqueror. Um, and it looks like they're... A little bit in danger of getting caught, but they should be okay with some good unit control here. Uh, it's going to be tr close, though. There's not a lot of room to run in this little choke point here. And maybe one going to go down, going to get snared. If he splits it off, there we go. Two of them will likely escape. Oh, but he sort of walks a little bit in the wrong path. So another one gets caught. And don't know if he'll be able to save that one. The RB is on the way, but... It looks like it is likely going to go down. Both of, All of them going to go down, actually. But still, overall, uh, even losing all three Hussars, that's still probably not the worst trade in the world, having uh, killed some of his villagers, drawn some attention away, got some information on what's going on. He saw the fire pit, for example. Uh, but anyway, the unit's coming in here now. This actually looks like a pretty good fight for India, to be honest. Um, Irregulars being called. Uh, big, massive Gurkha here. Not a lot of uh, Coyote runners left. Uh, the Mace kind of walking in to try to get onto those Zambrax, but uh, I don't know if the reinforcing Coyotes will be enough. Coyote combat is in, but there's only five Coyotes left. Six Coyotes, sorry. Seven Coyotes, actually. Um, but the positioning here is really nice for India. Going to lose one Villager. Camel attack coming in for those Zambrax to make them uh, a little bit more effective against those... Uh, coyotes and all things considered this is really really good for India at the end of the day. He's going to clean up this fight uh, Aztec has like a Handful of units left behind this the economy is far in favor of India and uh, Even despite killing the agar fort super early getting the extra 1000 experience suddenly India is looking to be in a fine position um, And he's starting to reach the point where uh, his army is going to be really difficult for Aztec to deal with, with that camel attack having come in. Maybe Desert Terror going to come in next, make those camels even more effective against these units. And uh, there's a the five Coyote shipment, still no five Villager shipment for Aztec, so uh, really kind of being forced to send that after that fight as he really needed the, um, the units to make sure he can hold on to that war hut. But I don't know if these Coyotes will be super effective here as they're going back in. Uh, Soar getting onto the mace as well as the mace try to focus down the Zambrax. But uh, four Soar shipment coming in. And uh, it looks like India will once again be totally fine here with a reinforcing batch of both Gurkha and Zambrax going behind this as well. He's going to clean this up. And I think he's going to be in a fantastic position at the end of this. Warchief has also still been dead the entire time over here. Which means that there's no XP uh, bonuses for Aztec in any of these fights, and it's going to actually be the GG from Prince, despite a fantastic start from him, so a uh, really surprising outcome there. Just going to take a look there. Yeah, the economy very far in favor of Conqueror, although if we look at shipments, 
only up one shipment at the end of that game, those tr last few fights going really well for him, and without the Warchief there to give him the extra XP, uh, seems like it wasn't much of an issue for him. And yeah, we can see, lost. he paid a few units for that aggro fort, but he did uh, force uh, Minutemen calls, he forced uh, the aggro fort to go down, so he kind of got his money back for that. So this was a good trade for Prince overall, I think. But this one right here, Conqueror kind of reaching the point where the Indian army is almost unkillable for Aztec and uh, getting a really, really nice fight as a result. So yeah, first game going over to Conqueror. Jump into the next game here. Conqueror will have to pick his civ first at India being gone. That is one of his most comfortable civilizations. Um... He could maybe consider playing something like Portugal on this map. I know that's another Civ he likes to play a lot. But uh, no, it's going to be the British, actually. And it's going to be Iroquois as the counterpick for Prince. All right, so here we go into the second game of this series. I'll update the score in just a moment here. Let me just double check the resources real quick. Looks pretty fine. Okay. All right, and it's going to be a wood start, looks like. So either Civ could be looking to do a trading post start here, especially with this wood treasure in base would be really nice for Eero to get uh, an early trading post. And uh, yeah, looks like Conqueror not going to walk towards the trading post. Maybe not yet. I don't know. We'll see if he does that. Uh, could also just elect to go for manners, as the trading post sometimes can slow you down. Um, Prince, on the other hand, not actually gathering any wood just yet, so might not go for the trading post. Going to pick up a couple sheep first, find 100 XP. Um, did he convert that blow gunner? He did. It's over here. See if Conqueror picks that off with a crack shot. Doesn't spot it. And it looks like neither player actually keen to be going for a trading post at this time. This Travaux could still potentially go back and construct a farm for some early experience uh, from Prince if he wants to use that wood uh, for a longhouse. Uh, but we will see. Doesn't have to commit to that just yet. Although it's getting pretty far away. It's just going to be a longhouse. Okay. And uh, 80 wood been spotted for both players here. Conqueror sitting on it at the moment. Going to go for a crack shot on that and uh, start going for this blow gunner. Prince paying attention. Going to go contest that immediately. So Conqueror going to take a lot of extra damage here, especially with this extra blow gunner coming in. And uh, we'll see who gets it. 
Um, even if Conqueror gets the treasure, he's at risk of losing his explorer as he'll likely get snared. Uh, so overall, Prince is kind of fine even if he doesn't steal this treasure, but it's really, really close. And uh, Conqueror does take it, and Prince being uncertain whether or not who about whether who got it didn't actually snare him immediately, but Conqueror not picking the greatest path to run is actually going to die to that blow gunner. And that's going to mean no scouting for him for the next uh, few minutes here, so that's not the greatest trade for him in the world. But he did get 80 wood, which is going to give him an extra manor house at least. Um, I think that's an extra manor? No, he got- okay, yeah, it is, because he got hunting dogs already, so... Uh, two manors and hunting dogs off of that uh, 300 wood start is going to be nice for him. Two dogs gonna give the way of Prince, gonna make taking these treasures even easier without having to, uh, fear the British Explorer being present. Then I'll immediately walk over to this 100 XP, it looks like. Uh, what else is back here? 100 XP, 40 XP, 40 coin. Nothing super big, but this 100 XP will be nice for Iroquois for sure. Especially if he wants to go for a fast age, potentially. Uh, but we'll see if he does do that. Look at the shipments, nothing unusual yet. Gonna be the governor coming out for British. Give him that tower and that gold. Make it a little bit easier to defend early on against any potential early aggression. And Prince... We'll be aging up behind him shortly. We'll see what it is in just a moment here as we wait for the last builder pop. There we go. And it's going to be the messenger. So with the 100 XP, he is going to fast stage. He will have a shipment ready when he hits up. So he'll be able to send that four Kanya shipment very early and apply some very early pressure uh, into the British base. Gangsaw coming out for a uh, conqueror behind this as well. Going to help his boom a little bit as well as... Uh, if he wants to make any longbows or anything like that. Going to start bringing in these hunts on the side. Doesn't have a lot of time to do so though with the uh, Travois moving across the map and this fast age in, but uh, he should have enough if he's on top of it. And trading post's gonna go down for Prince of Gabul behind this. So we're not gonna be super all in or anything. And it looks like it is the four Kanya shipment on the way. Uh, just looking at his population, seems like that's pretty much the only thing he could be sending right now. Maybe seven Aina, but that sounds really unlikely. All right, outpost gonna go down very defensively. Kind of a similar building position to last game, actually, uh, but Manor's a little bit more on the front to give some more line of sight. Um, Outpost going down a little bit further away from the front in case that four Kanya shipment comes in while it's constructing. But the Kanya were actually shipped to the town center, not to the war hut, so they'll be a little bit slow in getting there. And it also helps lock down this hunt a little bit as it gets closer to the base. Not going to find any villagers, but will force some idle time. And actually, six musketeers coming uh, for Conqueror. Uh, might be a little bit of an overreaction. But it will certainly keep him safe. And these Aida are not going to be super effective uh, in here either. But uh, overall, the pressure is sort of paying off for uh, Prince with that six musket shipment being forced. <clears throat> I think maybe the four muskets he got from the racks would have been enough to. Uh, deny idle time and stuff like that, but maybe it wouldn't have been enough with uh, a big button coming in along with a shipment, maybe. So eh, a little bit a little bit questionable, but maybe not the worst thing in the world. Not the worst decision he could have made, that is. On the other hand, still no hunting dogs from this free market, so uh, not making the best use of that just yet. But uh, he hasn't actually had the opportunity to gather any gold yet, it looks like. But I imagine we'll see that hunting dogs come in eventually. Meanwhile, the musketeer mass starting to grow a little bit. Manor population is only at 50, but still a slight economic lead for British, um, which is pretty normal against uh, Eero, probably. And a 600 wood shipment coming for Prince. Does he use that for a stable or anything? Doesn't look like he has a stable anywhere just yet. 
but uh, he's st stacking six nard wood at the moment, so I imagine we could see one pretty soon. And seven nard wood going to come for conqueror, which will help him get uh, maybe a second barracks or a stable, as well as more manors and maybe steel traps and placer mines as his next market upgrades. No stable just yet, it looks like. <laughs> he forgot about the free market. He placed a market and had to delete it. But, uh, still no hunting dogs. Six tomahawks coming. Still hasn't really used that wood shipment at all. Still sitting on the full 600 there. But, uh, he's got a pretty good mass of infantry. Although, I think Brit will be just fine with the help of the Minutemen and the Town Center Fire and the Outpost if he decides to come in there. But, one thing this pressure has done is it sort of prevented him from hurting in this second deer hunt that he was hurting earlier. Uh, so he will have to leave his base pretty soon as the animals are starting to run out a little bit. Although he still has enough for maybe another couple minutes. Still not using the wood. I'm really confused by the 600 wood shipment at the moment. And, uh... One musket coming in to rescue that explorer. Going to get some information in and get that explorer on home. Probably a reasonable trade. At this point, the explorer's uh, just fine as a unit by himself. Although getting pretty low. But uh, getting the information in is definitely worth it, I think, for the explorer and... Losing the musketeer. And uh, mixing in some longbows now that will make defending maybe a little bit easier. Still no hunting dogs. Hmm, and a stable going up for Conqueror. As well as 600 wood coming in. And finally going to start working away on this hunt. Get a manor down here to get some vision as well. Uh, in case any pressure comes from the side in the future. Explorer going to be moving over here just to cover uh, this location. Uh, while he herds that back and constructs that manor. So the army doesn't have to be too exposed either while that happens. Just sit next to the town center nice and safe. And uh, if he does come in the only thing he'll lose is that explorer. And it looks like it's a 7 Aina shipment coming next for Prince... Finally moving one vill to gold so he can eventually get that hunting dogs upgrade and having finally spent down most of that 6-hour wood shipment from earlier. Uh, looks like he will be pushing in. This is kind of a scary mass of units. Uh, a few villagers a little bit exposed here are going to get pulled back home as he sees the amount of units on this front door here. A couple vills will go down though uh, from that manor and another vill on the front here. Two vills actually going to go down here but going to... At the same time, going to be traded off for a couple of units as they take damage instead of the military units. Miniman going to be called as well. Hassar is going to pop one musket from the barracks. And it looks like this will be enough to hold on for Brit. But at the end of the day, uh, it's a, probably a reasonable trade for Eero having killed uh, four or five villagers there. But enforcing a Miniman call that will be a little bit weaker in a couple minutes time. Uh, but looks like he's actually still going to try and fight it with these Aina. And another batch of Aina coming. Uh, there's no hunts here for uh, Konk, so there's not going to be a lot of units coming behind this. This is kind of all he has for the moment, and this might actually be enough for Prince to uh, break through here. There's He has a significant military advantage, 10 more units, and yeah, he's going to be forced to retreat. A batch of Longbows does pop from the barracks, and 6 Aina comes behind it. 5 Settlers coming for... A conqueror instead of maybe something like six longbow and with all his villagers exposed here uh, Prince actually looks to be in a good position now and uh, Yeah, they're gonna be forced to run, but there's not really anything for them to run to they just got to gather trees in the back He has to fight for this hunt or else he's just dead and uh, It's looking like Prince is actually in a really good spot now as the military population swings in favor of him by up to almost 30 population Musketeer is not gonna be very effective against the Aina at all and uh, the Phil's very exposed here. There's uh, some longbows on the side still, but they're going to eventually fall unless he moves them back and going to lose a lot of villagers here. Six longbow shipment coming, finally. Uh, might be enough to hold on if he sacrifices some villagers along with a Hussar shipment, but there's still a lot of tomahawks here that can sort of uh, help deal with that. Um, 
Going into melee for a second there, we're switching back to range mode. Uh, looks like Conqueror will hold on, and he will hold on to his economic advantage for the time being, at least until the five villagers from Eero comes in, but it's going to be really, really close. Uh, he's got more units in queue, will likely hold on to this, but at what cost? And uh, this hunt is also starting to run out, with the animals being pretty exposed here. Going to force those vills away, kill another one as well. Nope, actually manages to live. But yeah, there's the five villager shipment coming in for Prince. Now up, four villagers. Granted, he doesn't have uh, steel traps or anything like that. So he's still technically behind in economy, uh, or maybe equal in economy. But Brit definitely doesn't want to be in this situation. Although, if he cleans up this army... I don't think there's a stable for uh, Prince. We'll check it out in a second, though. And uh, with just one Warhut producing units, he might be in a little bit of trouble. There could be some counter raids from these Hussars as well, uh, as the army from Prince is pretty immobile. Let's see if he's got a stable up somewhere. Looks like he doesn't have one. So... Yeah, these villagers are actually pretty exposed to Hussars raids. We'll see if... Conqueror goes for that. 700 food coming in now just to help him produce uh, some more units and maintain villager, uh, blah, 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 villager production. And uh, going to start bringing in this hunt as well with a couple of vills. Um, but this... Oh, second war hunt going down. But this uh, right side of the map here has a lot of food that Conqueror might want in the future. Or he may choose to just move towards the left side here where there's also a reasonable amount of resources. But uh, all things considered, looking to be a pretty good position for Prince. Uh, he's able to start sending those unit shipments, or unit upgrades rather, as his next few cards I imagine. Um, and with the two war huts here this will be a really difficult position uh, to break as a colonial British. Uh, but at the same time having two war huts and no stable does mean that your army is going to be very immobile. But he's going to be bringing the villagers forward up to the hunt over here and potentially over here. Uh, which will keep them close to his army and close to the war huts, which will uh, keep them pretty safe overall. Also moving his units back a little bit, and finally getting up a stable. And there is a raid coming for Conqueror, but only two Hussars, one of them very low HP, might not be able to accomplish too much, although he might spot the stable, which will be some valuable information. I think you'll get one villager here. The Vils might be able to just kill one of these Hussars. Doesn't notice that it's low HP just yet. Um, but at the same time, might lose another vill if he tries to go for that Hussar, so just going to go back to the safety of that town center, pick it off with town center fire. And uh, also going to move up to the top side of this map here. He knows that uh, Conqueror can't be in this location with his vills there, so he'll be moving up here to just check if anything's moving over here. Maybe he also wants to pick off this Hus as it retreats back. But uh, now conservative tactics is it in, which does give him 10%. Uh, more attack and HP on both the Tomahawk and the Aina. So these units are starting to get a little bit stronger. Next shipment is uh, still probably a minute or two away, but when that does come in, it will probably be infantry, attack, or HP. And uh, so this army is starting to get uh, pretty formidable for uh, Prince of Kabul. But at the same time, cavalry HP coming in for Conqueror are going to make these Asars a little bit stronger. And uh, important to note that this war chief is still dead. Uh, might want to consider dancing back for that at some point. If that war chief isn't around in uh, the fight in a couple of minutes here, might be pretty game changing for Conqueror. There we go. It is going to be Fire Pit coming down to dance that back. It's also going up. Up here, which is probably a good position for... Oh, a couple of husks going to find the vills here. <laughs> probably going to get at least one more kill, maybe even two. Prince is taking a little while to notice. It's going to get... Oh, it's not dead. Kill it. Okay, so going to get two vills here, it looks like, as the army slowly responds. So, ec economically, Conqueror has a slight advantage, but I think in terms of military, he's going to be falling behind as infantry attack comes in. And uh, these husks get picked off. But as I was saying, the fire pit's in a good spot here, as there's a lot of vills with a lot of resources nearby. Um, 
although they're kind of getting further away as they start herding these hunts towards the edges here. But uh, if he herds those hunts back towards here, he'll have a lot of resources in this area that he can just easily switch the vills onto the fire pit. This fire pit being in this location also means that his war chief will be easy to dance back directly into his army, as he does just now, as well as maybe even add some warriors into his uh, army composition at some point, or uh, war dance and stuff like that. Like we might be seeing a fight shortly with that warchief having been revived. He knows the villagers are on this hunt, so he's going to push in a little bit. Has to be a little bit careful as the longbows have a lot of range here, so if he wants to commit to a fight, he might take... Or if he doesn't want to commit to a fight, he might take some losses on the retreat. Looks like he is just going to go in, uh, force the villagers at least off the hunt for a little bit. Um, but this isn't looking like the best position for him. As musk attack comes in to make those musketeers a little bit stronger. And no war dance coming up for Prince either. There's also a raid on the side here that Prince hasn't noticed. And this is actually going really well for Conqueror at this point, it looks like. Uh, only Aida left, or sorry, there is a handful of Tomahawks left, but I don't know if it's enough. It looks like Conqueror not quite reacting fast enough, and he does lose quite a bit of Asars, but the infantry mass behind it will reign supreme here, forcing the Iroquois army back. Looks like these Asars were pulled away from there. I don't know if he garrisoned the Vils or not, but... Um, all things considered, going well for British, but I don't know if it's enough to break this location just yet. Uh, he doesn't really need to, though. There's still quite a few animals left here for him. But uh, looking to be pretty even still for the time being. And British still with no opportunity to uh, age up or anything. Behind this, a couple of Kanya being split off here. Going to go for a little bit of a raid on this hunt, maybe. Oh, there's a dot going down, actually. So, he has a lot of wood stacked up, so uh, instead of dropping down mills, he's going to start uh, fishing a little bit. Certainly an option, although it does take a little bit of time to get going. And uh, it may eventually get spotted by the war hut on the coastline here. Having this warhead here also gives him a location that he can sort of safely build a dock without really risking too much, unless there's a significant number of warships out. Another warhead going to be going down over here, trying to control some more of the hunts on this side. A couple of us are going to get picked off. And now all of the upgrades are in, I believe. Yep, all the upgrades that either player has in their decks for the Colonial Age have been sent. Um, I feel like it's slightly better for Iroquois. Just looking at the unit stats, his Tomahawks are quite tanky. And uh, the Warchief Aura goes off of the current HP, not the base HP, so it's actually slightly stronger than... Um, than otherwise would be as a result of those upgrades. It looks like there's going to be a fight here. There's not a lot of anti-cav for uh, Conqueror. does have a decent number of longbows, though, and a good number of hussars. But uh, will it be enough? There's still no war dance for Prince. The fire pit's too far away for it to be worth it for him to move the villagers onto that fire pit. And some decent micro pulling the hussars back a little bit away from a couple of these tomahawks. And going to be forcing Iroquois back once again. And even trades like this are good for British. Just because his economy is a little bit better, he'll be able to replace those units a little bit more easily. Uh, although he's starting to run out of animals now. Almost actually completely off of hunts. He only has the four fishing boats on water. Building a second dock as well just to get that going. Does he have any warship cards? No, he doesn't. Does Prince have any water cards? No. So neither player having any water cards. Um, no docks or anything for Prince, though. Really close to being able to spot that uh, dock. But, uh... Hmm, it'll take a little while for Brit to get going on this water here. He's got six fishing boats in queue from two docks and a mill going down as well. 
And uh, this is sort of the point in the game where Iroquois starts to pull ahead as a result of having access to still tons and tons of hunts on both sides here. Deleted the fire pit, going to rebuild it on this side right here. Uh, a little bit closer to the villagers. Although, these animals are almost out and he's going to have to move towards these ones. So <laughs> the fire pit probably would have been better keeping it over here unless he wants to fight immediately, which I don't think he does. So, bit of a questionable decision there. But uh, it looks like the water is going to get spotted by this war hut potentially. I think that might just barely be in range of the line of sight. I'm not really certain. But uh, there might be a fight coming in here. The British mass sort of suffering a little bit because of the transition to mills and fishing here. And uh, there's pretty significant advantage for prince in this area and uh, also war dance behind this and all the longbows are going to get cleaned up there's some reinforcing musketeers popping but it's not going to be enough it's going to be uh, a clean victory for Iroquois in this fight here and uh, he's going to be forced to run some of these villagers away there's a tower going up to protect the villagers in the gold mine here but it's uh, definitely at risk even garrisoning in that tower isn't going to save those villagers for very long and uh, these villas going to get caught on their way home. Going to lose quite a few here. And uh, just looking to military population, it's 55 extra population for Prince at this point. Even a score lead now for him. 700 gold coming in uh, for Conqueror, but unable to gather that at the moment. And the mill going to be losing all the villagers on here. And this is looking like it's going to be Prince's uh, victory in the series. Going to be tying it up as the High Chief upgrade comes in. Just going to be making that war chief a little bit harder to kill. Likely running out of shipments in the colonial age there. But yeah, I think uh, just looking at, at the economy as well, Conqueror going to be falling behind. He's getting some counter damage of his own done on the other side of the map, but losing villagers on the top side as well. Um, two towers here to try and defend these villas, but it's only going to last him so long. And a handful of musketeers... Not even a handful of musketeers going to be taken out pretty easily as the Iroquois army circle sieges the town center and forces the GG. So overall, a uh, good contain from Prince. The fights didn't really go super well for him, but at the end of the day, he did have map control. And uh, Conqueror never really felt comfortable enough to try and contest this position. And so all of these animals are denied to him, and eventually that costs him the game, because switching into uh, 400 wood into docks, another f 800 wood into a couple of mills, and then all of this wood into all these fishing boats takes a really long time to pay off, and uh, granted Prince the military advantage as a result. And uh, so, yeah, ties up the series one-to-one, -one, and uh, we'll be jumping into the third game shortly. All right, looks like the next map, blah, blah, can't talk. Next map, going to be Kamchatka. Uh, Prince, having won the last game, has to pick first. Hmm. I don't really know what Prince plays nowadays. I've seen him play a lot of really aggressive civs. I've seen him play a lot of auto, a lot of uh, Iroquois, a lot of Aztec. So, let me just see. Oh, wait. Okay, going to be Sue coming out for him. Makes sense on this map. You can quickly run to the middle of the map, grab the goats super fast. <clears throat> and test all of the treasures along the middle of the map. Lots of hunts in base as well as two gold mines. Make it a little bit easier for Sue to get to the fortress age safely. And going to be Portugal from 
uh, Conqueror, which is traditionally been okay against Sue, just because uh, they are pretty good at defending and locking down uh, some resources around their base, and then eventually outscaling in the late game. But I don't know if it will really work out that way, as Sue has some pretty strong uh, fortress timings that I think Port has a pretty difficult time holding, especially uh, without really strong walls, like on the official patch. We'll see, though. All right, so going to be a gold start looks like, which means probably not going to be getting anything out of that for either player here. No early trading posts or early markets for either player, most likely. Looks like the war chief going to immediately head towards the middle of the map here. Grab a couple of goats. Conqueror, however. I think he's aware that the Warchief can just grab everything in the middle before he could even get there, so he's just going to take his chances. Going down to the side here, maybe go directly to this location here, try to grab a couple of treasures over here while Sue is distracted with the stuff in the middle. Uh, there is a 90 wood here, so he could uh, potentially pick that up as Sue is looking to not head in that direction. Just yet, at least. Might be swinging down to this side here. Going to grab the macaque. And yeah, it looks like he is going to start up that 90 wood. you got to take whatever you find against Sue. If you wait too long, it will get scouted. And there we go, it does get scouted. And I think he will get there in time to contest that, most likely. The Sue Warchief... Uh, then again, it's being slowed down by the monkey, so probably not. It's a bit of a mistake from him there. That will go over to Conqueror pretty easily. Going to take a lot of damage from this tiger, though, as he tries to escape. Get to see the player's decks in just a moment here. Seventy-five food, gonna be a nice pickup for Sue with that monkey there to help out. Tiger still keeping tabs on the explorer, so he knows that there's zero chance that this gets contested. Um. I don't know why he's still keeping these grouped together, to be honest. Seems inefficient, but each his own, I suppose. Let's see what's on the top side of the map here. Nothing super useful, really, um, but might be able to pick up a couple of goats later on. Uh, let's see. Pretty standard looking deck for Conqueror here. Nothing too noteworthy. Prince, on the other hand, also looking relatively standard. Um, got a couple of H4 cards, not really any eco cards, which is not really unusual for Sue, so looking relatively normal from him as well. Reveal's going to be coming out. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, market now up for Conqueror behind this, kind of in not the best position as it blocks the path from this gold mine to his town center. But will maybe shield this hunt a little bit once he gets it back towards the town center, maybe like in this location. Might be a little bit of a buffer, but long term this is not going to be the best positioning for that market. Although, I guess it depends on where he puts his town center. If he puts his second town center right here, it actually doesn't matter at all. So uh, we'll see what he does with that. Uh, going to be standing next to this trading post as well. Going to drop that down as soon as he hits 200 food, or 200 wood rather. Prince on the other hand, only a couple villagers on wood at the moment, so 
might be waiting for that 400 wood age up, which he is going up with, to down a trading post. What is... Okay, so Conqueror is going up with the Philosopher Prince, which means he's going to be going for a very quick, fast fortress, which um, has upsides and downsides. It's going to mean that he's going to have uh, Dragoons out pretty early, which is going to help alleviate some of the raiding pressure that Sue might have, as well as maybe give him a little bit of control over whether or not Sue can place War Huts down in, in the middle of the map and stuff like that. Uh, but it's also going to mean that if Sue has any units out when he does hit, uh, fortress, that third town center is going to be a little bit restricted in where it can go. Okay, yeah, that is going to help mitigate this uh, market position, and I actually really like uh, his building placement now as a result of that. Uh, but the monkey going to come in, going to spot the 500 food, maybe. I'm not sure if it has enough line of sight to see that, but it might. But the leopard, leopard going to spot it anyway, so he will confirm if he's paying attention that it is indeed a fast fortress coming out of him. So going to drop down a second trading post, I believe, with that 400 wood having spotted that uh, fast fortress, as that will be relatively safe for him to do so. Not going to be under threat of musket sieging that or anything like that. And there we go. And uh, what else does he do with the wood here? Uh, could build a military building or could just go for a market or some TPs or something like that if he wants to be greedy. Which is also an option for sure. Some of gold coming out for port. Almost has the resources to age. Uh, we'll still probably need to wait a couple of uh, villager cycles before he does so. And yeah, looks like it's going to be a market coming down for Prince. So not going to be making any units here as a response to that fast fortress. Just going to get up to fortress as fast as possible himself. And uh, probably going to be 700 wood coming next, although he's deleting some goats, which means it might still be 700 gold, even though he's at 500 gold right now. We'll have to keep an eye on that. But on the other side, 700 wood going to come out for Conqueror. Uh, I don't know how much scouting he did with this explorer, unfortunately I didn't notice. Might have also spyglassed the base. But if he did do some scouting, he might be aware that there's no units out for Prince, which means he could potentially be a little bit... Um, more aggressive with the town center a little bit place it somewhere a little bit more ideal not necessarily aggressive but it's going to be the marksman age up uh, for the six casadors behind that so might not actually choose to place that too far away since he'll be aging quite a bit later than he could have but uh on the other side prince did send seminar wood that's going to allow him to get uh, some infrastructure down and some villager is going to go forward, so it is going to be a forward war hut, and uh, Conqueror are not going to be up early enough to really deny that. Um, also going to be picking up 195 food. And the villagers do get spotted. Uh, I don't know if he was paying attention, but he should know. Yep. Wait, what did he spyglass? I don't know what he spyglassed. Probably the base here. But uh, if he was paying attention, he should have seen that there's a war hut here. Also spotted the wood crates as they were being gathered. So he should be aware of what's going on at the moment for the most part. Might not know about the war hut, but uh, he will know that Prince is at least doing a straight fast fortress himself. Um, we'll see what he does with that third town center with that knowledge. Probably looks like it's going to head towards the top side of the map here, maybe. Maybe up to this location. There we go. Try and secure that hunt and gold mine as the castors pick off the two monkeys on the front of the base there. Meanwhile, Prince has a lot of Wakina in queue. Probably a nine Wakina shipment on the way as well. Um, depending on what Conqueror is shipping... Might be able to get a little bit of damage and harassment done with those. I know that Conqueror likes to send a thousand wood as his first shipment a lot of the time. Um, with Portugal, sorry. It's going to be a thousand food actually, which uh, makes some sense, I guess. Can maintain villager production from these town centers as well as unit production. But uh, we'll keep him behind in the unit count a little bit, maybe. Although it is with five Axe Rider shipments instead of nine Wakina, so 
Uh, probably totally safe in this spot location at the moment, although these vills might be a little bit exposed. And uh, looks like this one might... No, should be able to save that with the goons coming in here. But does at least force him off these animals for the time being. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Not really sure what the plan is for Prince at this point. I guess he just needs to wait for some more units to go for a bit of a stronger timing. Uh, Nine Wakina coming in now. That's going to give him the skirmisher advantage with this five Dragoon com shipment coming in uh, for Conqueror. But I don't know if they'll be able to do too much. He's also going to check the top side of the map for this town center. Likely swatted this dead animal. So this could be a point of pressure uh, for him as uh, it will be a little bit more difficult to defend without villagers inside this town center, as the town center only does 18 damage with those two villagers, and the army a little bit further away. But Conqueror will be moving up. Um, should be able to abuse the extra range on these cast doors against these Wakita if he controls them really well. But uh, the town center is definitely at risk of going down. The Dragoon's too far away, not moving. And uh, the Axe Riders get right on top of the Castors. And those Castors really do not have a lot of hit points against those melee units. They're going to take a lot of damage, and this is going to go really well for Prince. Um, getting into the trees is going to help restrict the pathing of the Axe Riders a little bit, but uh, not going well for him thus far. A couple of Vils going to be sacrificed as well just to try and uh, allow this army to retreat. Uh, Miniman could be called from this town center. Does have the resources available to do so, but not calling them just yet. And it uh, looks like all of the units going to get cleaned up here. Miniman getting called behind this army, but I don't know if it's uh, going to be enough. It doesn't really look like it will be. I mean, he's not going to take catastrophic damage from this, but it's going to be pretty bad. Call another batch of Minutemen, potentially, from the other town center. These villagers are going to be needing to run. Another batch of Axe Riders and a shipment of four Axe Riders coming in. And this is looking to be a rough spot for Conqueror at the moment. Prince can't really sit under here for too long with both these town centers working away at his units there. But uh, the damage has been done. Oh, where's the Mamelukes? There they are. Getting right on top of the Wakina, so this could be exactly what he needs to try and get back into this. The Axe Rider is going to be moving up there to try and assist there, but the Dragoons have to be really careful not to get caught here. They're pretty important to deal with the Axe Riders here. Going to get caught. Miniman getting called as well, as the units will be snared. They'll be able to get there in time to help out. This Mameluk being pulled back, just to take avoid taking unnecessary damage. And manages to clean up. Pretty much everything. Lost one Mameluk, two pretty low HP, uh, one still pretty high HP, but at the end of the day he did manage to hold on there. He's got a slight disadvantage economically, but uh, with three town centers he should be able to catch up given a little bit of time. But the hunt's starting to run out for him. Uh, he's still got this hunt he could potentially herd in a little bit further, um, but will take some time move villagers over there and stuff like that. A thousand wood coming in for Prince behind this. Maybe going to add in a second town center or something like that. There's not really a lot of ways that uh, he can really spend this wood. Have anything being researched? No. So it's got to be probably a second town center and maybe even a stagecoach upgrade or something. Maybe a second war hut or a stable. Okay, it's going to be a second stable actually. And maybe elite bow riders. He's training bow riders now. Keep an eye on that for the time being. But uh, a thousand food going to come behind it. Potentially going to help with a uh, dog soldier big button or something, or just trading a lot of bow riders. For the moment, it looks like it's just going to be bow riders. We're not quite at the time for uh, dog soldiers just yet. It's around 14 to 15 minutes, and he'd probably like to have a bit more units out before calling that. On the other side, Prince catching up an economy, up to 38 villagers himself now. 
as well as with the extra upgrades on them as a slightly better economy. And so Prince, even despite doing that damage, is still on a little bit of a clock here as he has to... He didn't close out the game with that push, didn't really do any lasting damage. Um, losing a few villagers as port is not the end of the world when you can replace them super easily with those three town centers. Not sure exactly where he spyglassed, but maybe he spotted the army here. If he did, he'll know that there's bow riders being trained. The fire pit coming down as well up here where the villagers are. Uh, so this is potentially setting up for a push with the dog soldiers. There's not a lot of animals here, but maybe he's intending to push before that. Or no, just going to dance the war chief back. That makes sense, actually. And organ guns out for Conqueror as well, going to help him deal with the Wokina a little bit. Also sending the explorer around here, trying to get some information on what is going on. If he spots both stables... Uh, might be aware that something is going on. The Dog Soldier Big Button was already called. Uh, before pushing, potentially. So he might be wanting to push soon, before these animals run out, and before these villagers have to move. Yeah, here we go. It's going to be uh, moving onto the fire pit now, going for the war dance uh, in this next fight here. But I don't know if he actually has enough stuff here to win the game. I mean, Dog Soldiers are very strong, and... I mean, he does have a... I don't know, I don't think this is going to be enough with the Mamelukes still up here. He's got some Bowriders to deal with them. Uh, trying to get onto the organ guns with the Bowriders, it looks like, but they're just moving back at the moment, not even shooting. He's going to take a lot of free damage on the Dog Soldiers and the Bowriders as a result. Just going to sacrifice the Villagers in the fight here. They really don't matter as much as winning the fight against this timing here. Both the organ guns go down. And uh, one Mameluke still up. And uh, there's not a lot of Castors left to deal with the Wakina, though. And no Minutemen available. It's like, uh, Prince will at least succeed in pushing off of the hunt here. And the hunt is kind of all that matters at this point. Uh, the hunt at the top side of the map running out. And I don't know if Conqueror has the resources to really replace this army. Um, these goons are going to be forced to retreat. Can't really stay and fight. Those castors, or sorry, with the Kino, which means the castors on the bottom are going to get picked off by the Axe Riders. And gold mine also running out up here. So lots of idle villagers for Conqueror at the moment. Not really able to gather anything. This actually might be bad for him. A thousand wood coming in, but that's not what he needs at the moment. Um, I guess he doesn't really have anything else to send. Maybe Dragoon Combat or something. But that 1,000 wood definitely not going to help him when he doesn't really need any houses. Doesn't really need to build town centers because he's maxed out. Can't really afford to produce some more military buildings. I could build mills, I guess, with that uh, wood, but that's not uh, ideal. So, yeah, overall, looking good for Sue, having denied the resources. Gonna pick off another vill here. There's still more vills for Conqueror, but I don't know how much it really matters at this point. All the villagers being forced to move over to this hunt here. And this gold mine at top will last him at least another couple minutes, but... Replacing that army is going to be difficult. Arsenal going to be going down with that wood. And a second stable. Hmm. I don't know if he can even really afford the arsenal upgrades on his three units. Wherever those are. I don't actually know where the, those military... Oh, here they are. Three castors. We'll see what he decides to get there in a moment. Spyglass going down. Maybe spotting the army again. We'll at least tell him that there's not going to be a super big push coming anytime soon with this number of units. And we gotta remember too, he was war dancing the entire time behind that, so it wasn't exactly a free push for him. But uh, definitely still paid off for sure. And Range Cavalry Caracol gonna be coming with that arsenal as well as Dragoon Combat coming in, but not a lot of Dragoons for that upgrade to effect at the moment. Uh, two Kettle Support coming, so 14 extra Okina, as well as making them a bit stronger. That actually makes this army really scary, and there's really nothing here to defend these villagers, and I think if Prince pushes right now, which it look, he's looking pretty hesitant to do at the moment, 
It could have been very bad for Conqueror, but he still has some time to do so. That's uh, still going to be quite a while before Conqueror can really mass enough units to defend that. Especially um, both cast enough castors to deal with the mass and enough goons to defend them from the Axe Riders. We're just going to keep an eye on this choke point. It's been sitting around here for a minute or so. Maybe going to move into this area now. Just look for the villagers, see if there's an army over here or anything like that. So at this point, pretty much all of the shipments have been sent for... Conqueror. The only thing you could really maybe send is an H2 military shipment or an, one of these uh, Royal Mint or Refrigeration upgrades. So shipment's not going to be super helpful for him moving forward here. Oh, the Axe Rider card now coming as well. Going to give him six Axe Riders. 20% more HP on those Axe Riders as well. So these uh, this army is looking really scary. He's got 50 population more. And he's war dancing as well. I think this is going to be the end of the game here, as uh, Conqueror really probably doesn't have enough to deal with this at all. And doesn't really have anything coming behind this either. And yeah, all the villagers are going to be going down here. Not even bothering to really garrison many of them in the tower. A few hussars coming out, but uh, there's enough bow riders here, more than enough bow riders here to deal with that. And uh, I think this is going to be the end of the game, and Prince is likely going to pick up his second victory here. Uh, barring some catastrophic uh, deletion of his entire army. Doesn't look like Conqueror can hold this. All the villagers fighting, but going down. Even Blunderbuss bus having been, been researched, but it's not not going to be enough. And, uh, yeah, that, there's the GG. And Prince picks up his second win in the series. Let's take a look at the post-game really quick. Yeah, this uh, this first fight here, getting caught with the Dragoons away from his cast doors really cost him big time. And even though he remassed adequately enough here, I mean, 12 of this population here is in uh, two low HP Mamelukes and one full HP Mameluk. Um, <clears throat> still manages to lose pretty hard in the fight to another uh, Dog Soldier Big Button and the War Dance, and then just wasn't able to recover from there as the resources were too far away. He had to spend a lot of time walking even see in the timeline kind of like falls off a little bit around that time so <clears throat> some solid timings from Prince there Next map is going to be Baja, California. Princess to pick first again. I'm going to just be taking a moment here to think about his sieve selection. Japan has been a pretty popular pick on this map so far this tournament, as well as Ottoman. Both sieves that Prince has uh, seemed to play a fair bit of, but it looks like it's going to be Russia that's also been a popular pick here. <coughs> Excuse me. So, going to allow him to get a little bit of map control, as well as potentially stagecoach and stuff like that. See what Conqueror responds with. He could stick with Port. But it uh, looks like he'll be switching to Germany, which is a uh, traditional counterpick to Russia. And I know he's been playing this matchup a fair bit as well with uh, Kaiser. I think he played quite a few games against in this matchup. 
So maybe feeling a little bit more comfortable with that. All right, looks like we should be getting started soon. Sorry for the silence, just answering some messages on Discord and getting stuff sorted for later. But we will be jumping into the third, well, wait, no, fourth game here in this best of five. Currently two to one for Prince of Kabul. So looking to take the series on this next game potentially. But uh, not the best matchup for him, so Conqueror has a bit of an opportunity to tie it up with this game. And it is a wood start, which is going to be really nice for Germany here. But also a food start, so uh, going to help Russia out as well in avoiding some idle time potentially. And uh, looks like Conqueror will be moving towards the bottom trading post down here. This is the post that gets uh, the first pass as the Travois spawns on the top side, but it's also a little bit risky in some matchups just because your opponent can also walk down here and grab the trading post first as this is actually closer to the space, but Russia not going to want to do that. So Conqueror going for the greedier trading post as a result. We can see that Prince maybe uh, was expecting him to go for this TP, and maybe he was hoping to get some damage done or something like that. Or to spot the treasures around it so he can contest them later. But uh, Conqueror going to be avoiding that situation. Does spot 150 coin though, so can't complain about uh, that whole situation for sure. Conqueror on his way up there. Did spot a scout and a coyote. Uh, pup, but nothing super huge. Looks like he's not even going to go back for the scout. Just wants to prioritize resources as much as possible. Um, <clears throat> nope, looks like... Eh. Well, we'll see. He might loop around up here and then go for the scout or something. But uh, scout is actually maybe not super useful in this matchup, just because you can kind of predict what Russia will do anyway, because they don't really have too, too many options. Um... However, leaving that scout up for Prince to take later on could be very valuable for uh, the Russian player, but looks like he will eventually come back towards this treasure, will pick up this scout, and uh, will have that information available to him moving forward. But Prince on the other side did pick up 150 coin, he's going to pick up 70 XP as well, and uh, is going to be sitting with a comfortable lead in treasures as a result of having not needed to construct a trading post himself.
And uh, so far, nothing super crazy going on. Take a look at the decks. There is some water possibilities for Princeton here. No two Caravels shipment. Probably doesn't really need that against um, Germany of all sieves. Not a sieve that's super likely to go for water. Does have six turn of food, which is not a super standard card in here. You'd maybe see something like Advanced Arsenal or Sustainable Agriculture uh, instead, but uh, does give him maybe some stronger timings, depending on how the game goes. Conqueror, on the other hand, pretty standard looking deck, has all the upgrades in it. No 5 Ulan shipment, no 600 wood, no 2 Settler wagons, but does have the 2 DOP upgrades as well as the, uh, uh, what am I saying, Cavalry Attack card, which is one you don't normally see in German decks just because it's a team card, which means you don't get 2 Ulans with it, which is... Not the greatest feeling in the world for Germany, but against Russia. Um, those cavalry upgrades can be quite good later on, so uh, I guess it makes sense to have all these upgrades in here. The DOP cards are a little bit unusual, but uh, I wonder if you'll be making DOPs as a result of that uh, later on. For a moment though, both players are aging up, but there are villagers on the map for Prince, so there will be a Ford blockhouse coming down uh, as expected. From Russia in pretty much every single matchup. And uh, Market gonna go down for Germany. Well, is gonna start bringing in this hunt. Native Scout does also confirm that the blockhouse is going up there, so he knows that that's a thing. Not gonna be expecting any weird stable start shenanigans or something like that. Doesn't actually pick up the 30 coin. I think he. Maybe failed the shift click there, but was also maybe thinking you'd just pick it up with a villager, maybe get some extra damage done on this blockhouse while it's under construction. Hard to say. But a uh, little bit of explorer action going down, uh, going down here, but probably nothing going to come of it, as the age up will come in, and that will probably just signal the retreat for Conqueror. Uh, can't really even wait. Norm normally Germany can afford to fight this, even if it's a losing battle, just because they'll get their two Ulans in, in time to uh, win the fight for them, but against Russia with the five Cossacks going to be coming first, that's not going to be the case here. Uh, but actually going to just stick around and fight that for the time being, which is maybe not the best decision in the world, but at least he'll get some uh, forewarning of Musketeers or Cossacks coming towards his base, and it looks like it's going to be a stable going up in the back for those Ulans. Uh, this gold mine on the front, a little bit exposed. There is one that could be a little bit safer once he has some units out on the back. Um, but he does need to wait until he actually has some units to defend that. And uh, this house is also a little bit exposed. Three settler wagons coming out first. Just going to be trying to siege down as much of that house as possible with these five muskets. Try to force a midman call or something out of um, Conqueror, maybe a little bit earlier than he would like. Two Ulans coming in here, Miniman being called. We're going to be focusing down the Musketeers as there are Ulans in queue, I imagine. Or nothing in queue, actually. I guess he didn't have enough gold, had to cancel the Ulans for uh, those Minutemen. But does manage to hold on to the house. Uh, doesn't lose any villagers. He didn't lose villagers, right? No, didn't lose any villagers. So, all things considered, not the end of the world. 700 gold coming in. Hmm. Maybe wanting to age up, but that might be a bit of a problem with the four Cossacks coming second for uh, Prince. This house still really exposed. Uh, is going to have to maybe think about doing some Ulans, maybe buying some wood to place some houses, but so far not doing so. Ulans going to get picked off, Miniman going to go down, Units or Villagers going to be forced to garrison. This house is under threat. Uh, Cossacks can just idle everything here forever. Uh, Ulans are now in queue. He's realized that he's not going to be able to get away with that age up. Um, and they're trying to get onto the gold mine, trying to get as much as resources in as possible. Uh, but the house not going to be able to defend that and uh, is going to drop down a house with this settler wagon while he has the time to do so while this one goes down. Uh, trying to chop a little bit extra wood to get some more houses down potentially. 
but uh, not looking like the greatest situation for him. No great coats on these villagers yet either. These Ulans do get out, and I believe they might have been spotted by the muskets there. Oh, this is one really low HP settler wagon doesn't go down. Great coat now being researched, just so those settler wagons can be a little bit uh, safer while they gather underneath the town center there against this Russian army. But uh, so far, not looking like the greatest position for Conqueror to be in. Still no villagers lost, though. So all things considered, holding on to the villagers is uh, a priority here for sure, and he's doing well with that. Eight crossbows popping out now, and with the Ulans here, he actually might be able to clean up this army with some good micro. Um, settler wagons popping out as well, as they're not going to be um, in a whole lot of danger. One low HP gets pulled back into the town center. And Conqueror manages to hold on, but not going to be able to age up just yet. Going to be rebuilding the house on the frontier, um, which will maybe give him a little bit of an extra shield for uh, these villagers on the gold mine, as well as the crossbows uh, sitting back here in this location, but uh, is also a little bit vulnerable to another push. But behind this, Prince, 700 wood, we dropping a stable. Maybe finishing up his market upgrades as Steel Traps comes in. Um, maybe even a second blockhouse or something like that. Still going to have a lot of wood in the bank, so uh, we'll see what he chooses to do with that. Could maybe think about investing into Strelets, even though the, he knows his opponent only has a stable at the moment. Okay, and Conqueror is actually going to attempt to age now. He kind of has to do it now, I guess, or never, as his hunts are starting to run out. And once they do run out, you don't want to be trying to age while you're also trying to defend these resources outside of your base. So with that 600 gold coming in, he is going to be clicking the age up. Um, we'll take a look at what that is real quick. It is going to be the Exiled Prince. He's not going to have a shipment ready, though, when he hits up, but he will be able to maybe start training war wagons. I don't know if you'll have the resources to do that. He's not quite got the houses for that and doesn't really have... The resources to queue more than one or two if he ends up getting idled by this army but for the moment Prince is sort of content to sit back and wait for that 700 gold to uh, pay dividends on that uh, Cossack batches those Cossack batches and a second stable coming down as well as a second blockhouse kind of in a little bit of an awkward position it does sort of defend these two hunts here from any Ulan raids later on but doesn't really help protect the front base here at all and one Ulan going to come out just to do some scouting, maybe harass some villagers a little bit as well. But the age up is going to signal a push. There is a native scout on top of the army here, so he's aware that this is coming. Uh, he does have three war wagons in queue. But he has to be really careful not to overstep with these units. As uh, the Cossacks will just demolish those before he gets anything out. And it looks like he is going to head straight onto those crossbows. They really sh probably should have been hidden, but unfortunately we're not. They're going to get taken out. The Ulan's not going to try to assist those at all. Those crossbows are just done for. And he's aware of that. Uh, settler wagons. Uh, one might go down. Does manage to get it back in. These two settler wagons still going to try and get as much gold in as possible. Trying to get enough resources for that extra settler wagon, but just short by a handful of uh, food and coin. But once the war wagons come out, there's not going to be anything to really answer them here. They have more range than literally any unit that uh, he can field. Ulan's also coming in to cut off the reinforcing strelets, which is really nice, uh, but going to be forced to retreat. Picks off three strelets, though, which is pretty good. Also spots the reinforcing batches of Cossacks. But these uh, war wagons could potentially kite this forever, although they don't have enough space to maybe do that forever. But uh, getting good value out of them nonetheless, but not gathering any resources behind this. Still garrisoned up back at home as there are Cossacks underneath the town center. Settler wagons coming out now to try and get some coin. Uh, one of them is very low HP. He's going to get focused down, but misclicked onto the high HP one, so will actually be saved. And three war wagon shipment coming out now in Germany. It might be totally fine now with that uh, popping out as it's going to be very difficult for him to deal with that. Also, the Ulan's going to be getting onto the Strelitz. Town center focusing down the Cossacks. But the Ulan's can't really afford to stand and fight there. Uh, one war wagon not able to continue kiting. But these five war wagons have plenty of space to continue kiting now down the south side of this map. Just going to get lots and lots of value to that, although one does go down to the Strelitz here. 
Got to be really careful, though, as those Strelots do do good damage if they manage to get in range. And one of them getting really low, not moving. He's trying to move the one back, but the, the tree is in the way. And the other unit's sort of blocking the pathing here. Sort of trying to stick around his base with these uh, war wagons. Knows that he needs to stay around so he can maybe force the army back, avoid getting idled. Doesn't want to get maybe flanked by some Cossacks or something, end up losing these war wagons if he's kiting outside of his base. But, uh, uh, not being quite careful enough with these war wagons, losing a lot of them where he maybe shouldn't be losing as many. But at the end of the day, he's alive. He does still have some resources back at home. He's got another shipment on the way, perhaps the eight skirms or nine ulans or something like that. And uh, Prince still stuck in the colonial age, but has ten musketeers in queue. Native scout still on top of the army, so he knows exactly what's being trained. And, yeah, for the moment, probably a pretty even game. Germany has a much stronger army once he starts getting some of these shipments out, but Russia does have map control as well as an economic advantage. And, uh, that one war wagon going to go down to the blockhouse there. There's nine Ulan shipment on the way, but no veteran upgrade. And I don't know if this is enough to fight this with nine Ulan, nine unupgraded Ulans and two war wagons. I'd have to say probably not underneath all the military buildings here. Uh, so he's just going to back up there, just kite his way out with those war wagons. Gold mine about to run out. Prince might be saving to age now, up to 1300 food. Um, he does have a 600 gold shipment he can use to age. But he could also just invest all that food into Musketeers. And four more war wagons coming out for Germany. Um, still not enough wood to really afford to get that veteran upgrade. But these war wagons might be enough to potentially push in here. Still got the native scout, so he can <clears throat> always confirm what is going on uh, from Russia here. Still needs to be more careful with those war wagons. And looks like Prince is just going to continue investing into units for the time being. Really doesn't want to try to age and potentially give up this uh, forward base. But we'll see. He has a shipment on the way. Probably going to be either Boyars or 600 gold to age. If I had to guess, it's probably Boyars just to make these Strelets a little bit more effective. And as well as the Cossacks. Villagers also starting to be a little bit exposed on the map here. Has to be a little bit wary of Ulan raids, but I don't know if uh, Germany is feeling comfortable enough to uh, try his hand at raiding too, too much at the moment. And yeah, it is going to be that Boyar shipment coming in for Russia to make uh, those units just a little bit stronger. It's basically like a veteran upgrade for Strelitz and the Cossacks, so probably better than aging for sure. Another big batch of war wagons coming out here. Still not able to get that veteran upgrade. I believe he's got a shipment on the way as well. Uh, might be Cav Combat or the Eight Ulans. Explorer does spot the army as it's moving across. Native Scout should have spotted as well. Um, this is a scary looking army, although there's eight skirms now being added in. Along with the war wagons. You could... Got a really strong army here. Still no vet upgrade on the Ulans, which is unfortunate, but... Just can't afford to do so yet. And Russia just going to be trying to slam into the base here with those Cossacks. Uh, skirmishers a little bit exposed. It's just trying to kite back here. You can only kite back so far. And uh, Vildur is going to be forced to garrison. This gold mine is going to be under threat. The edge of the map is going to prevent him from abusing the extra range on those skirmishers and war wagons. And this is looking like it might be uh, potentially the game deciding fight here. Uh, Russia looking to be in a good position as this goes through. Villager is just going to continue gathering. Settler wagon is going to come in to tank some damage potentially. But I think it's not going to be enough. One batch of sk <laughs> one skirmisher popping out from the barracks isn't going to be enough to save the game here. And it looks like Prince might be taking the series with uh, this victory here. In the three to one uh, victory. 
So well played from him. Conqueror maybe getting a little bit too, uh, trying to H up too early maybe. And uh, Prince of Gwil having a good answer to that with the four Cossack second. And yeah, Conqueror was just never really able to get a uh, large enough lead to win the game. Yeah, just ahead in military the entire game. Even though Conqueror's army is stronger. Not having enough space to kite back and also just having more units means that uh, Russia has the advantage there as well as idling the town center for significant periods of time after the age up and then getting an economic lead himself. He forced the idle time there. Meant that he was housed, didn't have food, couldn't train villagers. Essentially the same as killing villagers. And uh, yeah, manages to take the win there.